Hi guys, Electrostats here. Welcome to the second episode of Time to Improve. In this series, I will be covering multiple topics that range from beginner's advice to advanced mechanics that in my opinion are crucial to improve at Beat Saber. Today, we will talk about jump duration, jump distance, no jump speed, and how you can use them to improve your reading ability. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Before we start, it's important to know what these variables are and how they influence the game. The jump duration is essentially double the time that a node takes to reach you from the moment it spawns to the moment you hit the node. The jump duration is usually calculated in milliseconds or in beats. The jump distance is double the distance at which the nodes will spawn from the player's position. Increasing its value will make the node spawn further, and decreasing it will do the opposite. This variable is calculated in meters. It's important to keep in mind that half jump distance and jump distance are not the same thing. The half jump distance, like it says, is half the value of the jump distance. The no jump speed is the speed at which the nodes will travel towards the player. Increasing the no jump speed will make the nodes move faster, and decreasing it does the opposite. This variable is calculated in meters per second. Keep in mind that these variables are all interconnected. If you have any two of them, you can calculate the last one. For example, considering that the no jump speed of a map doesn't change, if the player decreased the jump distance, the jump duration would also decrease. Using the base game settings, you can use two different jump duration types, dynamic or static. For the dynamic jump duration, there are five different offsets. Each one of these adds their relative value to the map's default jump duration. For the static jump duration, the jump distance is determined by the selected jump duration. Another way to change the jump distance is by using the mod JD Fixer. The number at the top represents the jump distance, and the one at the bottom is the half jump duration. For this guide, I will be using this mod. This will allow me to change both variables with a much higher precision than what the base game can offer. To know what jump distance we should use, we need to talk about two more things. The node density and the reaction time. The node density represents the amount of nodes that are displayed in front of you at the same time. A higher node density will make it harder to read all the nodes as they approach you. In general, we try to lower the node density as much as possible. Considering the node jump speed of a map cannot be changed, the two options that are left are either to lower the jump distance or to decrease the half jump duration. But by lowering these values, you are also decreasing your reaction time. It is very important to find a good balance between decreasing your reaction time and decreasing the node density. When looking for the perfect jump distance, try lowering it as much as possible while still maintaining a good amount of time for you to react. And that's it for the second episode of Time to Improve. I just want to say a quick thanks to Rabbit for helping me with this video. Almost everything that is in this video was also put into a document by him. The link to the document will be in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed that video, and don't forget to subscribe to see more of my content. I will see you in the next video of Time to Improve. Peace!